When using the lettering tool in Design Shop, you've got a lot of different alphabet types to choose from. Let's take a look at how those work and the different types that you have. If I select a lettering segment in Design Shop and I right click and I go to Properties, one of the first properties that you get to change is the alphabet that you're using. And in this drop down menu, you get a long list of different types of alphabets. If you move your cursor over one, you get a preview to the right side. But if you look at the left side, you'll see a little icon. Um, and that represents the different type of alphabet files that you have. The first one that we're going to look at is this, that is an EA, that's an embroidery alphabet. Now, when dealing with embroidery, you are dealing with some limitations of needle and thread and fabric. So for the most part, the EA alphabets or the embroidery alphabets are going to respect that limitation. There's only so far you can go um, when you're shrinking down a, uh, an alphabet before it starts being smaller than a needle. So you need to be aware of that. If it gets too big, it can start to snag and pull out. So you need to be aware of that too. These alphabet or these embroidery alphabet files are going to do fairly well in kind of helping you respect those limitations. Not only that, but if I look beside the alphabet, I have access to a code sheet. If I click on this, it will launch a PDF of all the previews for these alphabets and it will go automatically to the alphabet that I had selected in Design Shop. Let me move this over and bring up my PDF. So now you can see I had block selected. In this it went immediately to block alphabet. It will tell you or the code sheets will tell you what alpha or what characters it has available. So in this block alphabet, I have the letters A through Z, but I only have uppercase. So even though I typed lowercase in the lettering window, they came out uppercase. So just kind of be aware of that. If it's not coming out the way that you're thinking about, just make sure that the alphabet that you are selecting has the characters available that you need. We also have the numerals zero through nine. We have punctuation symbols. One other thing I want you to pay attention to is does it have lock stitches? So some of these alphabets, um, especially some of the older ones, will have manually digitized lock stitches. Those are the same things as tie stitches, and they will need to be dealt with um, when you are dealing with tie stitches in object properties. You want to make sure that you don't double them up. So you either need to remove them from the alphabet and then apply them in properties, um, or you could just leave them in and not use the object properties to, to add those that um, can, can definitely be dealt with a little bit more when you're dealing with the tie-ins and tie-offs. Another thing you should look at is the minimum letter height and the maximum letter height. Now these are guidelines for how small can I go before I start getting thread breaks, how large can I go before I start having some um, threads start to snag and maybe pull out, or maybe a joint that gives a little bit of a gap because the digitizer was planning on the push and pull of the thread to kind of close that gap up a little bit. Other alphabets, so let's go into our bookmarks and let's go down to another alphabet. Um, let's do Bookman. Bring this back in. So Bookman has a couple of pages in the alphabet. This has way more characters. So it's got some European characters, it's got some um, nice punctuation and, and symbols and all of that associated with it. To access some of those, you may need to use the numeric keypad on your keyboard. And to do that, it will tell you how. It says to hold the Alt key and type in the code associated with that character. So if I was using Bookman and I wanted an Enye, I could hold Alt and I could type 0241 to get an Enye. So let's do that really quickly. Let me minimize this. Let me change my alphabet to Bookman. That's important because if I had an alphabet selected that didn't have that character, it wouldn't show up, which would make demonstrating this a little bit confusing. Let me move this over so we can see it a little bit more. If I wanted an Enye, I want to make sure that my numeric or my, my num lock is on. And I can insert my cursor, I can hold Alt, and I'll type 0, 2, 4, 1, which was the code associated with it. When I let go of the Alt key on my keyboard, that character appears. Now to see it on, sc on screen, I need to hit Apply, and now I have that character. So with some of the alphabets in the code sheets, you've got a lot more uh, characters available to you. You just have to find the codes 
to make them work well. All right, so that's an embroidery alphabet. If you scroll up in the list, you will find OAs, and those OAs are operator alphabets. If you have the upper level of Design Shop, meaning Design Shop Pro Plus, you have the ability to create your own keyboard alphabet. So like we are using these embroidery alphabets and typing them away and they just appear on screen. If you wanted to create your own alphabet, you could do that with Pro Plus and that's using that alphabet editor. When you create an alphabet using that tool, it creates it as an OA or an operator alphabet. The OAs that were loaded with your software were digitized for Melco um, for use with your software when you first load it. So those are going to work fairly well for you. If you're creating your own, if you're not a stellar digitizer, they're not going to be a stellar alphabet, and they may not work as well for you as the stuff that we've provided. But if I scroll up in this list, let me get back to here. If I scroll up in my list, I can see a list of OA alphabets. These will work fairly well for you. They're digitized using some slightly newer tools than a lot of the EAs, and um, they too res uh, respect the limitations of embroidery. If you are using one of the OAs that is loaded with your software, you can also access information about them in the code sheets. If you are using one that you created, obviously there won't be a code sheet associated with it. So the OA should work fairly well for you. I tend to use them um, frequently. And then I also have my EAs as another set of embroidery alphabets um, that I can use. Lastly, I want to look at, in the bottom of the list, we have TT. Now it's a true type font. Those are fonts that were loaded onto your computer in the fonts folder for Windows. Those are fonts that were meant to be on screen or on paper, ink on paper, pixels on screen. And so they don't have that same respect for the, the thread and the needle and, and those kind of limitations. So these may work really well for you. They may not. If you find one that um, works well for you, that's fantastic. If you don't and it needs a little bit of editing, you can always go in and edit that a little bit. So if you find something that's really close to what you need, it's a great place to start. Let's take a look at using some of these true type. When I select a true type and I hit apply, it works just like my EAs, except I may find there are a couple places that I want to edit some of those stitch directions. Now the one that I just chose, Georgia, is a serif typeface. It was meant uh, to be used on the web. And what's kind of funny about that is web fonts tend to have similar restrictions in that they tend to be view viewed fairly small um, and on screen. And the pixels and the thread tend to have similar restrictions. So this one is working fairly well for me. If you find a more display font, which I am trying to find, Take a look at this one and see how it does. This one's working fairly well. It does get a little bit thin in a couple of spots. So with some of these true types, you may need to go through and add a little bit of pull offset or, or make them a little bit thicker so that they sew a little bit better. You might also just want to take a look at a couple of the stitch directions um, and give it a sew out on a, on a swatch before you sew it out on the final garment. But having these true type fonts allows you a wider range of alphabets even yet than just the, the alphabets that are loaded with your software. So with the embroidery alphabets, with the operator alphabets, and then with the addition of true type fonts, you have a wide, wide array of uh, fonts to choose from. Keep in mind that some of these are level dependent, so true type fonts are not available in every level of software, um, but even then you still have a huge array of embroidery alphabets to choose from just above them.